Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News analyst Emmanuel Efeni, the great Malabite. Good morning, Ruben. Good morning, Ayo. Good morning, Welcome back, Rufai Oseni. Baga. With all the implications in place. Yes, we are ready. You are welcome. We started the review well, with these days. When they bring the implication, <laughs> you will say you don't eat uh, bad day food. Well, on television, you say bring the implication. Today, I will force you to drink something, drink something, eat something, drink something, eat something. Anyway, <laughs> let's not speak to our faith in this uh, program right now. Yeah, Otherwise, you want me to dilate on birthday matters, but I won't do that. <laughs> Don't call the Bible. <laughs> call the newspapers. Well, let's start the review with this day, Nigeria's newspaper of record. Now, we start with the story above the masthead, Dangote. Lower fuel price from our refinery will help reduce inflation. Upbeat about turnaround of nation's economy restates commitment to Nigeria's industrialization. President congratulates Africa's richest man on 67th birthday. Yes, Aliko Dangote, industrialist, richest African. Um, He's been doing great things. Of course, he turned 67 uh, yesterday, and he visited the president, President Bola Metinubu, who is, of course, obviously in town, and um, has been congratulated by the president also, saluting him for his efforts in uh, his faith in the Nigerian economy, investing here when he could have taken his money elsewhere. And he has been a shining light, an example to many others who own billions to put their money here in Nigeria, creating jobs, creating wealth for others. Of course, uh, creating uh, a lot of opportunities, although we are still waiting for the price of cement to come down, Alaji, because so that is... come down from 13K to about 8K or 9K? 8K is come down. Yeah. No, to yeah. about 8K from 13K. Yeah. So it's just for it to come down 8K more. is not come down, please. Thank mm. you. <laughs> 8K per bag of cement. You don't want people to build their houses anymore. So I like it. That's Tell a challenge. But we salute uh, Aliko Dangote on his birthday. And of course, the, the hope which he has expressed that once... Uh, Products start uh, coming out, fuel, PMS, and other products. Um, well, there will be significant impact on the inflationary trend in the country. Well, hope, that is hope, because in Nigeria, it's whatever goes up hardly comes down, especially as it has to do with prices of goods and services. Now, uh, there's a story there, Airpiece flight to London, sparks price war among foreign airlines. Well, the next story. Obaseki, Oborowori, Ibori, Igbenedion, others celebrate Tom Ikimi at 80. Chief Tom Ikimi. High chief. Uh, that's how they call him these days because he's chief. Uh, he has titles from uh, various jurisdictions, as it were. He's the inne of Igwebe, an inherited title, and also the Odoma of Igwebe. Esama. Yes. Yes, of uh, Igwebe, which uh, was conferred by the committee. He's also the Akirogu of Ife, conferred on him by the Orni of Ife, Olubuse Kunade II. And um, yesterday he was celebrated, turned 80, an architect by profession, uh, but his forays in politics is best known to Nigerians. Chairman of uh, the then National Republican Convention, the two parties created in the military era, and he did a fine job, and he has been a leading light in uh, politics, although these days he restricts his activities to so his home state uh, of Edo, where his next project uh, is installing a governor of Essa Extraction from, Delta, uh, from Edo Central. I think he's also at the heart of that project. 
And it's not surprising that both the PDP and the APC in the state have picked candid uh, candidates from Essence Central. I'm sure that uh, the emergence of a governor of Essence Extraction will be a fitting tribute to uh, Chief Tom Ikimi at 80. Of course, he was also Foreign Affairs Minister, uh, appointed in 1995, uh, during which he also served as the chairman of ECOWAS um, Council of Foreign Ministers. Now, if we look at uh, the lead story, we must prioritize love for our country. Tinimbo appeals to Nigerians at Eid Prayer, stresses need to protect integrity of government leadership. First Lady, let's sustain good deeds of exhibited during Ramadan. Buhari, Shetima, Zulum, Akabio, Barao, governors. Others seek support for leaders. Atiku, Saraki, PDP. Others urge prayers for nation. Of course, the Eid celebration. It was prayers, exhortations from the clerics as well as political leaders yesterday across the country. And of course, the president uh, was part of the prayer session at the Obalende Praying Ground, during which he also spoke uh, to correspondents on the need to, for Nigerians to put their, give their support to the leadership in the country. And of course, leaders being urged to serve the people well by the clerics. Now, the Guardian newspaper, NSAS probe panel report. Victims await 1.7 billion Naira compensation after 25 states, three years, from 25 states, three years after. Yes, victims await 1.7 billion Naira compensation from 25 states, three years after NSAS uh, probe panels. A number of uh, the Victims who were victims of, uh, of course, police brutality were adjudged to have been uh, so victimized and should be compensated. And because the police, the Nigerian police, they are agents of the federal government, I think these compensations should be paid because it was the government of the day uh, that urged uh, the setting up of this pro panel in various states to look into cases of police brutality. Now, the Punch newspaper, Edel Fitri, defend Nigeria, support leaders, Tinimbu Buhari, urged citizens, while the Vanguard newspaper, the lead story, tariff hike, 20 hours supply for Band A customers on that thread as power allocation hovers at 3,236 megawatt. Potako Disco apologizes for shortfall Kaduna Disco sets up response team, no transparency, fairness in billing, CPPE, firms will pay for the services they don't enjoy, LCCI. Well, there's a problem of this band. I thought we should be talking about service-driven tariff, but here we are with band and band A, even some areas being abandoned, as it were. Now let's just move on to the Daily Trust newspaper. CBN sacks 50 more staff, 117 gone in 20 days. Staff accused management of illegality, double standard. External vendors affected. Some house clearing going on in the CBN. And um, so many persons have been sacked. Whatever the reason, I'm sure those persons are also complaining. Some are talking about illegality, double standard. So what is the criteria being used for the sacking of staff at the CBN? Cleansing the organ table, is that the case? Now, the Nigerian Tribune newspaper, CBN intensifies Naira defense. Federal foreign reserves depletes by 500 and $95 million in one month. So we know where the money is coming from, which the CBN is using to defend the Naira. Yes, defending the Naira, that's what seems to be going on now. Now, the Nation newspaper, our diesel price caught, dri caught driving down inflation, says Dangote. Well, what Dangote has said, as this day has reported, is that it will drive down 
uh, inflation when it is fully in the flow into the Nigerian market. Now, the, let's look at the foreign newspapers quickly. The Daily Telegraph of UK, Biden warns Iran not to attack Israel. President vows ironclad support for ally as sources report imminent assault likely. Now, that story is also uh, in the front page of the Guardian newspaper of UK. The Biden declares ironclad support for Israel amid fears of Iran attack. U.S. hopes pledge will stop Tehran retaliating over Damascus, while the New York Times is reporting allies of Trump plan to bolster third party runs. Candidates are viewed as threats to Biden. Another report there, a push by Trump helps sink a bill on surveillance. Set back for Johnson, right-wing defectors in house halt extension of intelligence too. Well, um, the Times of London has a report on its front page. Sickness claim rise, hit Tories had land. Incapacity benefit up by a third in different areas. Ruben, Rufai, and Ayo. Okay, uh, very quickly. I think that the uh, major point that I would like to react to is the statement made by our political leaders on the occasion of Edel Fitre. Before he joined us, I said the most intelligent statement that I've seen is a statement made by Mrs. Uh, Remy Tinubu, Senator Remy Tinubu, that, look, beyond Ramadan, people should continue to imbibe the lessons and should continue to show the behavior. Because, as I've argued, on the occasion of the 63rd birthday of Pastor Itwa Igodalo at uh, Trinity House, is that the major problem we have in this country is hypocrisy. We talk about hypocrisy with regard to U.S. and other countries. The big problem of Nigeria is hypocrisy. Everybody is a religious leader. When it is Lent and it's uh, Easter, everybody goes to church. They are, they, are, they are doing like this, doing like this. They take Holy Communion. When it is uh, uh, Ramadan, Eder Fitri, everybody is uh, at the praying ground. But these people, our leaders, as Mrs. Tunubu pointed out, Look, all of us, we need to behave like uh, true human beings. So the piety of the holy month should not stop at the holy month. So that's the thing I saw in all the uh, statements uh, made yesterday. All this point about uh, 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 Nigerians should support their leaders. The leaders too should support us. <laughs> we want to see Nigerian leaders are also supporting us. So for me, those are the uh, major points. The other major point is about uh, uh, President Biden uh, saying that the support of uh, the United States for Israel is ironclad. That again, if you, if you break it down, there's a lot of hypocrisy there. The same President Biden will say, oh, humanitarian support. It wasn't that what he said earlier on, and he said uh, the U.S. will review its relationship with Israel if Israel uh, does not ensure easy passage for humanitarian aid. But on another score, he says our support for Israel is ironclad. Uh, ironclad. And the uh, U.K., uh, Lord Cameron, Foreign Secretary of the U.K., is saying, oh, we will not stop selling arms to Israel. So on the question of Israel and Gaza, or Hamas, if you like. You know, there's a lot of hypocrisy in international politics. And I keep saying that, look, these two countries, they are weakening the instrumentality of the United Nations and of the United uh, uh, Nations Security Council and its agencies. So these are the issues we're dealing with. Hypocrisy at home, hypocrisy abroad. <laughs> So, right. well, Rufa, right. perhaps so, the warmongering uh, tendencies of Netanyahu, so, because his attack on that uh, Iranian consulate, mm -hmm. it's like the, it's a deliberate attempt to escalate mm -hmm. 
the Middle East crisis beyond uh, what is happening the in Gaza. has not admitted it. <laughs> they don't do, have do, to do admit it. Did you admit anything? <laughs> How many things have they admitted? Did they have to admit? For, <laughs> look, <laughs> they don't have to admit it, but they have not denied it either, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. So going to bomb a consulate of another country is equivalent to bombing Another in country. violation of the Geneva Convention, Convention. Okay. on, uh, yet, on uh, diplomatic relations. Yet okay. nobody is condemning Israel for that. Act. 1961, okay. 1963, I still, Articles 31, 32, I 33. still keep saying it is best we look at the man, Netanyahu himself. With due respect, there is nothing Bibi, as his fondly called, has done that has not been about war and warmongering. Bibi comes from a long line of people that have a lot of scores to settle. And this is feeding in. And I'm shocked that the Israeli people are falling for his gambit. The first score Bibi needs to settle with himself is the healing he needs to get from the death of Yonatan, his brother, at Operation Entebbe. He says that in many interviews. His brother was an Israeli commander. And since that time, Bibi has not healed. Secondly, this was the same Bibi that only months ago, the Israeli people were protesting against him on the streets of Israel, where he wanted to whittle down the power of the judiciary. Yeah. This was the same Bibi, Netanyahu. And he knows that he's going nowhere, so he uses a lot of divide and rule tactics. I mean, this is not the first time we've had an onslaught in Israel. And we know the reaction we got. You have moderate leaders that they so much shoot for peace that they even lost their life. Today, Honorable Mention Yitzhak Rabin. Yeah. Today, we have people like Ehud Omet. It's not today we've had attacks on Israel. But Bibi wants to score a cheap political point. And if you follow up with him and allow him to do it, then he will destabilize the region. I think also the hypocrisy we've been talking about goes back to this same Britain that is now saying they will keep selling weapons. To so Mr. Balfour and his declaration. Because in the middle of the war, they wanted to get an advantage. And that's why you are increasingly seeing, because of the disastrous effects of Bibi Netanyahu, you are seeing another rise of what I'm against, but I'm seeing happening, of anti-Semitism. Because the rise of anti-Semitism back in the 40s, when it started, was because of activities of the likes of Ergun and Shogun, which were militia group fighting for an Zionist nation, and the bombing of various British troops and the decimation of that region. This hypocrisy also goes back to those that started the real problem in the Middle East. Mr. Sykes and Pico that drew a line in the sand. You can, for further reading, we can read James Barr's book called Line in the Sand. Sykes and Pico. How these two British, British and uh, what's it called, French diplomat shared the Middle East according to a line as they had to pick it among themselves. Who born you to share a region of people with their own traditional values because you had the power of conquest? So we all know where this is coming from. And if the Americans continue with this hypocrisy of today we want humanitarian, and Nigeria, too, continue with this hypocrisy because Nigerian parliamentarians at the International Parliamentary Union, instead of voting in favor of the resolution of the ICJ as regards all of this happening and taking a firm ground, went to support a Danish proposal of a soft kid blood of let them have peace agreements. We all know what's going on. A station time saves nine. I just hope we don't escalate and blow this out of proportion. Well, Nigeria's foreign policy is non-aligned. <laughs> non-aligned. So Nigeria doesn't take any activist <laughs> position. Really? In, uh, mean, yeah, yes. Today, you know, no, that's our foreign policy <clears throat> position, you know, explained in books 
over the But why years. did they vote in, in however, favor of a Danish um, media? The, the big issue yeah. with regard to Israel is that, look, international humanitarian crisis and Israel's continuous violation of international law. All the, uh, as I, I pointed out repeatedly on this program, international humanitarian law, you know, um, as governed by the Geneva uh, Convention, 1949, and the additional protocols, particularly Protocol 2, Common Article 3 and uh, Articles uh, 31, 32 of the Vienna Convention uh, on Diplomatic Relations of 1961, uh, Vienna Convention on Consular Relations of uh, 1963, Articles 31, 32 thereof. See, that look, you can't behave like a rogue nation. Israel cannot continue to behave like a rogue nation, but, yeah, and nobody <laughs> will be able to do anything but about America it. Supporting no, so, no, but this is the problem. Israel. Ruben, you just hit the nail. <laughs> Some of the actions of Israel, like the bombing of Iran's consulate, those are terrorist rogue nations' activities. Uh, no, terrorists, don't use that word. No! That's too big. Uh, uh, you can say rogue behavior. But I, I think also very <laughs> It's not terrorism. You, you so can't bomb a uh, yeah. consulate? No, no. Under armed conflict has law. Very big. <laughs> <laughs> you can look for escape routes, but no, not terrorism. Is, is no. Israel that a genocidal? <laughs> well, no. Well, those words have been used. But international humanity. What, what was the pronunciation violated. at the international court? What was the ICJ. Yes. Yeah, the ICJ mm -hmm. had a. Uh, decided that humanitarian passage should be allowed. No. But the problem we have is that, that Israel's is action is likely to lead to genocide. They, to put it mildly. That's what I you. Yes, but it's it, not genocide. It, and they have got. They, they, have not, they cannot enforce it. No, I'm not Which talking about enforcement now, but let's about. say it for what it is. What is happening is Gaza is genocide. All right. Okay. You are using the word genocide. Wiping children, women, the three, over three. 32,000 people killed. Let, let's go, let's yeah. go. Right? No, no, no. no. I, I, I will be I conscious using the word genocide. We need to As go. a yeah. student of uh, oh, wow. uh, uh, law of armed conflict, oh, okay. I will be cautious. Mm. But in any case, thank you very much, uh, Emmanuel Fini.